you see becoming anything is always a matter of practice yes in the world if you want to be a cricketer can you be that without practicing can you be that without going to the field every day and practicing your shots <laughs> you can't do that do you want to be a doctor you have to practice i remember when um, there was the lockdown and there was this um kanya and she was studying um she was studying to be a dentist and uh, she was at home because the college had shut down and then they were teaching them to operate the teeth um or on skype so <laughs> they were te- they were learning to you know perform dental surgery over skype or zoom or whatever medium uh, and uh, it was interesting because she told me that and then i told her so are you confident enough that you can uh, you know perform a root canal <laughs> by learning it on zoom so she said i think so and then okay i said all right then when she went back to college after the college opened she said it's two different things you know learning it on zoom and doing it actually and uh, they are not related at all <laughs> yes you know what to do and all but then you have to do it and that's a whole different game and then to be good at it you have to practice it so there are three aspects you have to learn what to do then you have to do it and then you have to do it continuously to be good at it now uh, in the class or when we read the murli we learn what to do but that is not enough if you learn what to do but never do it will you become what you want to become because this is a study to become a deity uh become the perfect version of yourself but you cannot become that until and unless you do what you're studying and uh, these days you see it's all about gathering information about everything but not really practicing and you need to look deep into your heart and ask yourself what is it that you have practiced in this life so you see what is it that you have practiced i lo- i remember um learning the english language for me was big practice when i was growing up and i dedicated you know long hours to learning and um you know memorizing words and doing vocabulary studies and i did all of that and uh it is everything is practice even if you want to learn a language it requires practice and uh, these days the the what do you say the the zeal to practice or the zeal to be continuously in practice because practice is doing something over and over again yes it's not like you do a new thing every time you get a new experience every time but do you do that same thing over and over again and you see when you teach children how to write what do you do you give them a, a chalk and a slate or you give them a pen and a paper or a pencil and a paper and then you draw a line and you tell them just keep drawing a line on that line <laughs> and they keep drawing it again and again and again and they keep writing over and over again over the same letters you wrote for them so that is practice and this practice and the capacity to practice is very reduced in these in this world of you know computers and games and phones and other stuff 
But you see, um, you cannot become a, a deity from a human without practice. And um, Baba says, you have to practice and that practice is called yoga. Now you see, in the class, we learn what to do in yoga. So we learn that you have to practice to be soul conscious and what is soul consciousness? What is the experience of soul consciousness, attitude of soul consciousness, uh, the method to be soul conscious, you remove your attention from the old world, old body, go inside, uh, think that you are a star and sit behind the eyes and just experience yourself sitting there and experience that your swadharma or your innate qualities, peace, love, happiness, just focus on that and focus until it starts manifesting, until, and, until it starts revealing itself to you, that actually your qualities are that. But how many times do we make that effort and you have to practice every day, practice and every day go together. So, Without practice, we cannot change from a human to a deity. Now, every day we learn about uh, practicing to be soul conscious or remembering Baba. How many times in the Murli do you read, you have to remember Baba? But do you do that? <laughs> and uh, why do we read the Murli? Because the Murli is the mind of God. So, through the Murli, you get to know Baba. And then knowing Baba and then spending time in your mental space, you know, in your awareness, being with Baba as you know him through the Murli, not as you know him through the Shastras or the scriptures or through other people or religion, but knowing Baba through himself, you know, Baba reveals himself, tells about himself through the Murli. And then we take the murli and we take the recognition of Baba that we build through the murli and then we remember Baba as he is and uh, we remember Baba by considering ourselves to be a soul. So these are the practices that we need to do and it is very important that uh, you know knowledge and yoga are balanced. Because if you know everything and do nothing, then you become nothing. And only your ego is inflated that, yes, I know this, I know that, and I know the other. But it doesn't translate into a personality shift. And this is why Baba today says that you have to have eight hours of yoga. So, you know, at least eight hours you have to pay attention to be soul conscious and remember Baba and be in Baba's remembrance. Now you see that Baba tells us that you have to um, do eight hours of yoga and then Baba tells us that it is not hot yoga, it is not austere yoga. What you have to do is you have to fend for your livelihood also you don't have to leave the job, you don't have to leave the family and then you don't even have to not sleep and just you know wake up all night and do yoga, no. Baba says you have to do this every day. So you have to find a balance uh, between sleep, work and 8 hours of yoga. Now if you have to do that then the first thing you do is you identify all the other stuff that you're doing which is wasteful. Yes, so it's not restful, it is not, uh, it is not related to earning life for your livelihood, but it is wasteful. So there is a lot of stuff in our life which is wasteful. So you eliminate all of that and you divide your day between, you know, building awareness of yourself as a soul and staying in remembrance of Baba and drawing the light and might of Baba into you. And uh, you see, in the world, whatever we experience is anyways through the Buddhi, is it not? 
Yes, even if somebody is standing in front of you, how you experience that person in your internal world depends on your buddhi. And even if things are not physically, you know, visible to the eyes, you, are, you can be in awareness of them and experience them. Uh, don't you? I, I remember, you know, there was this uh, one place we visited and I was there and there was another sister and then there was a Wi-Fi modem and um, she told me that, uh, you know, Didi, this is a uh, this is a this is a very bad kind of a Wi-Fi. I don't know what she was trying to say, but she said that these radiations are very strong. So uh, let's not sit here and sit in another room which doesn't have this modem there. So I don't know whatever uh, information she had. She talked according to that, and then she took me to another room, and. Um, I remember in that process, I was just thinking that you see, you cannot see anything. Can you see the radiations? You cannot see the radiations. But it is in your awareness that this thing produces these radiations. So they can invoke a sense of fear in you or a sense of, you know, this um, super uh, being super vigilant in you. So this sense is invoke, invoked because of the awareness that you have in your intellect. Similarly, Baba says that when you are, when you sit in the awareness and awareness is an aspect of the buddhi, the soul. So when you sit in awareness that you are a soul and when you sit in awareness that you are in connection with Baba, and Baba is the ocean of all virtues, powers, and He is the one you have all relationships with. Then you keep experiencing the love and the light from Baba, even while doing whatever you are doing. So Baba says, at least you should have eight hours of this awareness. You can have it sitting alone or you can have it while doing something. But generally while doing something, it is difficult to hold this awareness or, you know, uh, hold this awareness in a very concrete, nice way. So it is recommended that you do some sitting yoga and then there are some work and activities that you do during the day, which are very repetitive in nature. So let's say, you know, you are cooking chapatis, very repetitive every day. Even if you close your eyes, you can cook chapatis. <laughs> so in that time, you can stay in remembrance. You can stay in this good awareness of drawing light and might from Baba. And anyways, Baba says that when you are cooking, you should stay in Baba's remembrance. So these, these, this is what Baba is asking us to do that at least have eight hours of remembrance of Baba. Because you see, Baba is at a different vibration. Baba is the ocean of purity, love, peace, knowledge, joy, power. And we are living in a world which is the complete opposite of that vibration. Now, when we connect our intellect when we have buddhi yoga with Baba, then what happens is we are soaking in that energy while operating here. And slowly that energy from Baba is so transformative that it starts transforming our sanskars from deep down. And we start changing into the purer version of ourselves, which is very close to what Baba is like. So Baba starts changing us into somebody who is like him through this buddhi yoga. And uh, this is why Baba says practice is important. And, you know, I have seen that uh, there, are, there are children of Baba who listen to the Murli for four years, five years. And then when you look at their actions, you wonder where are they coming from? You know, sometimes Baba's children, four years, five years, six years, 10 years in Gyan, and then 
the kind of words they will speak or the kind of behavior they will engage in makes you really wonder what have they been doing all these years and if you look at them and ask them have you been remembering Baba so you will find that their subject of yoga was very weak and uh, they have not paid attention to remembering Baba and they have listened to the Murli but they have not paid attention to remembering Baba and without remembrance you cannot reform your character and you see Baba says that if you want to have purity in your character if you want to re reform your character the only method is to have buddhi yoga with the one who has the finest character so it is a very subtle practice and in this subtle practice obviously you have to unplug your attention from the old world you see uh, let me give you a very simple example right now there are many sounds around you many many sounds around you but you can't hear them but now that I told you you can hear them yes so when your focus was on the class you couldn't hear those sounds but when the focus shifted you can hear the sounds so this is you know anything that is of a subtler nature will stay hidden from your awareness until you make some effort to pay attention to it yes have you seen that when you are lost in the reading of a book or when you are lost in listening to something and then somebody says did you hear that sound then you say no I didn't hear it so they say just put down your book put down your phone and just try to listen and then you can hear that sound so you require some attention and some unplugging before you can uh, you can perceive things that are subtler and just think about Baba Baba is not even physical like a sound Baba is the subtlest you the soul are very subtle so in order to come to the awareness that you are a soul and Baba is right here with you you need to remove your attention from everything else and tune yourself into that subtlety into that attention that I am a soul and this is Baba and Baba is here with me and there is a very good expression in I think Christianity where they say that God, God says be still and know that I am here and that's a very good expression of you know what we do in yoga so when you just be still still in the sense not just still with the body but when you keep your mind your uh, buddhi still and then you become aware that you are a soul and Baba and you have a subtle link of love and through that link of love you're receiving Baba's light and might and when you just come to that awareness you can see yourself filling up with Baba's light and might and as soon as that awareness is lost that whole experience is gone and the charging changes into discharging so Baba says at least pay eight hours of attention now you see that uh, it requires nothing because you are a soul anyway Baba is there with you anyway but what it requires is eight hours of attention at least <laughs> and when you are in attention you can be with Baba and the recharging starts happening so this is something that Baba tells us that at least eight hours of everyday attention and yoga you need in order to transform your sanskars or reform your character otherwise you see uh, the baggage is huge 63 births of pap karma is not a small deal <laughs> we have so much pap karma that our buddhi our sanskars nothing is with with us you see you want to do something you understand something is good for you 
but your sanskars don't cooperate your mind doesn't cooperate so just think about what what mess are we in and if we want to change that then at least this much of effort is required now you don't start with 8 hours right <laughs> so if you are at zero you start with 10 minutes 15 minutes 30 minutes and you slowly gradually increase 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 and at least 8 hours is your aim that you bring it to 8 hours so you take baby steps if you are a beginner but then you have to understand that the journey has to be made and then baba also talks about another practice which is the practice to master your physical organs and your sense organs okay so and in that practice baba says mastering the physical organs is easy so what are the physical organs the eyes nose ear touch and smell so how do you master them again through practice so just tell your eyes just give your eyes this program that today you have to see this and not see that <laughs> yes and uh, let's say you see there was this one um, um, kumar brother he came and then he said that um, i'm very addicted to the phone and i told him so uh, don't watch the phone today nothing nothing on the phone so then he said that's not possible today my favorite series is going to be launched <laughs> so today i'll spend all day on the phone so i said today only you have to do this just take this challenge that i will not watch the series and then he said but how can i do that i can't do that and then you know he finally he just deposited the phone in the center and he went away and one week he did not watch anything on the phone he had no phone at that time and that was the uh, that was and after that one week uh, he uh, the when he came he said i have lost interest in watching that series and now i don't feel that temptation to watch so uh, so you see that there is this pull of the eyes pull of the tongue pull of the ears don't listen to it give yourself like a master you dictate what the eyes will see you dictate how many hours even if you know your work entails the use of something or viewing of something you make a program for the eyes how much time you use the phone or the laptop and when is the time to stop not that your eyes attract you so this is must and uh, about the tongue you know again uh, you know if you if you crave for a certain kind of food or drink just give yourself the challenge that i will not take this for one month and you know in bhakti also there was this practice that um, give up your most favorite thing and it is not your favorite it is ravan's favorite because <laughs> that is what makes you a slave of the senses so just give up what you what attracts your tongue the most and then when you take up that challenge you feel that you know that thing doesn't have that much power over you and uh, if you have ever done that then you know that it gives you a lot of self confidence it gives you a lot of confidence in yourself that yes you you are not a slave of your senses and you feel great about yourself when you do that so baba says that mastering the physical organs uh, the skin so whatever pleasure you derive from the skin just stop taking that and just give yourself a challenge that i am not engaging in any sensual pleasure and just tell yourself that i am a soul and my very nature is bliss and joy and happiness so why can't i create it 
through my own effort by remembrance of Baba and why do I need pleasure from outside so just fill that gap whatever gap you know is a comes into existence because now you're challenging your senses so there is an illusion that your senses are the door to happiness and the experience of peace and bliss and other stuff so you fill that gap with soul consciousness and Baba's remembrance and then you come to realize that all this while you were just living in an illusion that actually the senses it is happiness and bliss comes through the senses but it is not like that then Baba says this is one thing the next aspect is mastering your man buddhi and sanskar the subtle organs now they also require a lot of practice and let me tell you one thing practice is always done in favorable circumstances right if you think that you can practice when times are tough it doesn't work like that practice always happens in favorable circumstances what you do in tough times is the calling of the time you can you help it at that time <laughs> when there's no food to eat you have to stay hungry right so that's not called practice uh, because you will do it not with happiness you will do it with this uh, you know uh, what do you say helplessness with this feeling that I can't help it so I have to take it so that kind of a situation doesn't build inner strength because that's a situation where you're feeling helpless so when you're feeling helpless you can't feel like a master so a practice is always done by choice and in favorable circumstances so when uh, when you sit in morning yoga that is the time to practice so how do you practice mastering the mind so when you give the mind a command to stay in this one thought and one feeling this one experience then your you look to it that your mind creates that thought feeling and experience that is a part of the practice now you see uh, you tell your mind that I'm a peaceful soul and I want to just stabilize myself in this experience that I'm a star radiating the light of peace constantly and I'm feeling the peace that I the star am radiating if you just want to stabilize yourself in that experience you will see that after some time without even your knowing your mind has wandered <laughs> and you're thinking about lunch you're thinking about what the person said yesterday and you're thinking about what's going to happen in the day and then what you have to do is you have to again very calmly bring back your mind to that same image you that same experience and this is called practice of the mind and buddhi because you have to bring the buddhi back to that same image where you are seeing the soul radiating the light of peace and you have to bring your mind to that same experience of peace and you have to do it every day until you get better and better at it yes and then you can have different practices like I'm a loveful soul or I am merged in the ocean of love so yesterday I was just having this beautiful experience where I'm a star and I'm just you know entering this ocean that is Baba and uh, that ocean is vast and huge and I'm just going on entering the ocean called Baba and I'm just feeling the peace and it's never ending <laughs> and I kept entering and entering the ocean and uh, it never ended and it was a very beautiful experience so you see you can have various methods of just focusing your man and buddhi on one thing and then creating an experience out of it so this is the practice of the man and buddhi and then 
the practice of sanskar emerging the practice of training your sanskar is the practice of emerging the sanskar you want to emerge during the day so let's say you give yourself a practice challenge in the morning today that no matter what i will always emerge the sanskar of having good wishes and good feelings for everyone today okay so and you practice it and you uh, half an hour you just create good wishes and good feelings for the earth water sky for the body for everybody around you for all souls of the world you do this as a foundation practice and then all through the day you have taken this challenge that come what may i will not budge from this one promise that today i will only have good wishes and good feelings even if somebody comes and slaps you <laughs> don't budge from that one thing because you didn't lose anything by somebody slapping you but if you leave your practice you will lose your kingdom <laughs> so and you see these are very temporary things somebody praising you somebody defaming you somebody insulting you somebody hurling appreciations at you these two things don't matter but what matters is what are you practicing and what are you becoming so don't leave that practice in the moment and all through the day and after the day is over at night before sleep submit your chart check how many times did you falter how many times did your uh, good wishes change to otherwise okay and they will <laughs> so don't think that's failure or anything but uh, they will so just maintain a chart and maybe today you lost 20 times or you know 10 times or 5 times but tomorrow you want to lose less than today okay and you keep doing this take it as a project until you are able to maintain that sanskar for one full day without creating the opposite of it or without falling from it so this is how you keep practicing uh, for your mind buddhi and sanskar and when you keep doing this then slowly gradually your man buddhi and sanskar are under your control and you are the self sovereign this rich this raja who has absolute control over his man buddhi and sanskar and what and this kind of a raja they don't uh, they this kind of a raja will be able to apply this power of mastery over man buddhi sanskar in difficult times yes so even in the most difficult and most unfavorable of circumstances you will be in a position to have so much command over your man and buddhi that wherever you want them to focus they will focus and whatever sanskar you want to have emerged at that time you will be able to emerge so this is how you become a king and nothing happens overnight Yes, it doesn't even happen in ten years. Let me tell you, uh, but you receive you you move you know much ahead in ten years, but not the complete process. It's a lifetime process, but every day you have to keep practicing. You have to keep paying attention to the murli and manthan so that you know what to do, and then you have to do it every day and maintain a chart every day. about what you did how successfully you did how much you failed and then keep improving that chart this is the way to progress it is a slow process but it is the only process available there is no other substitute okay om shanti